Welcome back to Fast Market here on the Schwab Network. It's time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in our next guest. It's going to be Andy Swan, co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We're talking GM. It's had a pretty good run so far this year, up uh, 35%, <clears throat> yeah. so it's bounced back. You, you widen it out to a three-year chart. It doesn't look as good, but it's been pretty choppy lately. Uh, what kind of data do you guys have on GM, one of the legacy automakers, where, you know, it could be a good quarter, it could be a bad quarter. I'm kind of curious to see what uh, what type of sales they've got. Yeah, you know, I would say like Folio data is showing surprisingly uh, good in indicators on uh, GM. You know, they've had eight consecutive quarters of earnings uh, outperformance. And really for us, the key is looking at, you know, GM's web traffic, because this is where a lot of people are doing their research on their next car. So they may not necessarily be in the purchasing phase of things, but they're at least starting to take a look around to research the car that they saw that their friend has, uh, et cetera. And GM's web traffic up 20% year over year, you know, really was a very positive surprise for us uh, at Likefolio. You know, when you see that Ford is down, Tesla's only up 5%, that kind of outperformance by GM really very strong and a lot of that has to do with their ev strategy um, gm has done a very good job of setting itself apart uh, potentially picking up some of the pieces that tesla may have dropped by launching the cyber truck instead of something a little bit more traditional because gm's really focusing its ev efforts on larger electric vehicles uh, you know the chevy silverado the Hummer is very popular as an electric vehicle. And so I think they've they've created or at least uh, stepped into a pretty nice niche there in the race for second place in the EV market. GM is really coming on strong. So um, their traditional uh, their traditional engines and, and cars look to be doing very well. Web traffic is up significantly and accelerating over the last month. You know, pretty much all the indicators we have for GM I think gives them at least plausible deniability to go out to the street and say, look, things are looking pretty good as we head into this fourth quarter. Uh, there may be some macro headwinds headed our way, but as a as a brand and as a uh, product lineup, we're feeling pretty good about how consumers are reacting to our offerings. You know, Andy, it, the chart on GM looks really good. They're putting out a lot of good news. My question is, is this a hybrid story? Do they have the right mix maybe of, because they still have internal combustion engines. And yeah. if EVs are starting to max out or soften, are people going to start to look at, do I want to go internal combustion or maybe some type of hybrid which fits these? And the case, remember, because we, we, we have read warnings from Volkswagen, Stellantis, BMW. They've warned, always kind of warned about lower numbers. It, what is GM doing right? Is it is it hybrid or is it just they're, they're starting to catch up to everybody? Well, yeah, I think it's they're starting to catch up, and they have um, you know a nice breadth of breadth of offerings. So, you know, with the the um, manufacturing capabilities that GM has, you know, this is a company that puts out seven hundred thousand cars per quarter. So, uh, you know, EVs hitting seventy thousand of that in a year is you know is a small number, but there isn't the EV. Um, you know, kind of fatigue that people think is out there. Uh, you know, the EV market can, continues to grow. Uh, I do think that hybrid is potentially a very good uh, mix well into the future. I think that's a great um, solution for most people. But GM can pretty much go any direction with this, and they've built a really solid consumer following. They've got really nice consumer happiness ratings for most of their product lineup, which others don't. And so I think they're in the driver's seat as far as, you know, having that broad market penetration, having that broad market uh, manufacturing ability to really go where the customer wants and are building out the expertise to do it in multiple avenues. And I really love that, that strategy of if it's going to be an EV, let's let Tesla have the Teslas they dropped the ball on the Cybertruck in a lot of ways. Let's build the big EVs 
for the world. And I think there is a significant demand there. So it's a pretty, pretty good strategic decision by GM as well. Yeah. Uh, and Andy, I want to get your earnings score on this one going into earnings. But I think more than anything, it's it's this is about the consumer. Uh, and this is yeah. not only domestically, but globally, because GM sells a lot of cars overseas. Is that the key to a lot of these automakers success? Because uh, to, to, to be honest, over the last year, over the last few months, $50 a share has been a real ceiling for this uh, stock in the near term. And if the consumer breaks at all, is that, uh, you know, you know, cause a concern for this uh, stock and a lot of the automakers? Yeah, absolutely. And what you mentioned, you know, the other the other thing that could trip us up on our you know, we have a bullish uh, score go on GM going into earnings. We think that they have all the right reasons to have a positive outlook going forward and, and good numbers for the past quarter. But there's always China out there, which we don't have visibility into and which could really uh, trip this up. And in, in addition to that, if the company wants to continue to stay somewhat conservative about their outlook, that might be prudent given the macro uh, headwinds that are on the way. But I will say from a you know consumer research perspective, which is what like Folio tries to focus on, customers are are really liking the product lineup at GM. More and more people are researching these cars, indicating future purchase decisions. So we think that GM is winning among the automakers, among the non-Tesla automakers, uh, a bigger and bigger market share, especially into the future. So um, we think if it can break through those highs, the stock could really run. You know, that's the other side of having kind of a ceiling on a stock is a lot of times when you get through that, a big run can happen. So the way we'd like to position ourselves going into this is we think they do well. If it can break to new highs, uh, then it could really run. We'd like to benefit in an asymmetric way to the upside and protect ourselves with defined risk to the downside. You guys are so good at, at creating those types of trades. We'll let you do that. But that's the way we see this as kind of a, a home run type of swing on a generally boring company. All right. Great data. Great stuff, as always. And the stock hasn't broken above that $50.5 level since uh, basically two and a half years ago mm -hmm. uh, also. Yeah. So a uh, little bit of a resistance. All right. Great stuff, Andy. Have a great day.